Now, what I'm going to do is add some extra pictures to the document. Um, and I'm going to, again, add a stroke to these uh, images using layer styles. So first up, I'm going to go to File, New. And I'm going to create a 150 pixel by um, 90 pixel document. And what I'm going to do, is, so I get um, similarly sized images, is I'm going to open up some pictures from the film, paste them into this document. I'm sure I can find them somewhere on my hard drive. Okay, where are those Nacho Libre pictures? Ah, there they are. So I'm going to grab the uh, first image that I wanted. Uh, which is of one of the main characters. I'm going to select that area with the rectangular marquee tool, copy it, and paste it into my um, new document here. Now the reason I'm doing this is so that I can get each picture the same size. Uh, going to edit and free transform, I can change the size of the image. I'm now going to go to select all, edit, copy, switch to the smart object and paste it in there. Now once again to get a stroke around this image um, to make it stand out a bit from the background I'm going to go to the uh, layer styles menu at the bottom of the layers palette select stroke change the color once again to white I don't know why the defaults red and hit OK and what I end up with is this. Now I'm going to repeat that process a few times um, to get um, images of a similar size and um, position them sort of beneath the main character here. So this is where I'm up to now. I've got the text in the background, I've extracted the image of D Jack Black, I've got the three characters um, and they're all those photos are the same size, I've simply put a stroke around the um, edge of them using a layer style. What I'm going to do next, and this is the fun part, this is where we start to use um, some of the brushes and, and filters in Photoshop to make this look like a really um, grungy um, grindhouse poster. Uh, first up, what you'll need to do is go to File and Save to save the smart object that you've been working in. Close the smart object and you'll be returned to your original document. First we're going to click on the smart object, choose filter, artistic, film grain. And I'll just do that now. Filter, artistic, film grain. And I'm going to mess around with the uh, settings here until I get something that I like. Just adjust uh, the highlight area, um, the grain and the intensity until I get something that's a little bit grainy, it's a little bit blown out, and then I'm going to hit enter. Now the real advantage of using smart objects is that you can come back in and change this at any time. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm just going to hit enter, and it'll take me back to um, my original document once the effect's applied. To adjust a smart filter, what you need to do is go to the Layers palette, um, double click on the name of that filter, and you can go back in and adjust it at any time. So if I want to reduce the grain on this image a little bit, I can. And if I hit Enter, once again I'll be taken back to my document. So whenever you've applied a filter to a document, you can double click on that filter um, in the Layers palette, and you can adjust it at any time. And that is really, really powerful. If you change your mind, you know, a day or a week down the track, it's very easy to get back to your original picture. I'm going to use an adjustment layer here and I'm going to use that to uh, desaturate the entire image and to create an adjustment layer you go to layer, new adjustment layer and I'm going to select hue and saturation. I'll just hit OK and I'm just going to drop the saturation down on this image just a little bit. Maybe not that much, just so it looks like it's a little bit faded. And I'm going to hit OK. And this is where we're up to now. It's a little bit grainy, it's a little bit desaturated, um, but it's certainly by no stretch of the imagination looking like a grindhouse poster just yet. Now this is the really cool part. 
there are a lot of grunge brushes out there that you can get on the web for Photoshop. Um, however, what I'm going to do is use the default brushes in Photoshop to achieve this particular effect. I think you can do a lot with those without creating your own brushes and without um, going to third parties to get brushes as well. First up, I'm going to go to the brush tool and I'm going to go to the drop down menu in the options bar and first of all I'm going to sh um, choose to display the brushes as a large list so I can see their names. Then I'm going to load the brush set called Faux Finish Brushes and hit OK. And what you'll notice is that my default brushes have been replaced by the Faux Finish set. I'm going to select Veining Feather 2. Now, once you've got um, Veining Feather 2 as your brush, what I want you to do is add a layer mask to your smart object. Now what this will do is mask parts of the image that we paint over. Make sure that your foreground colour is black before we start off. Okay, now just a few more settings um, with this brush and I'm going to go over here and click on the brushes um, button and change some shape dynamics. I'm going to crank up the size jitter, I'm going to increase the maximum diameter, maybe not that much. I'm going to crank up the angle jitter and what the heck, the roundness jitter as well. And what you'll notice is that this brush now becomes um, very, very unpredictable to use. And I'm doing that because I want a fairly random effect. Now it's important here that you're painting on the, uh, that your foreground color is set to black and that you're actually painting on the layer mask. So what I'm going to do is just go around clicking here and there. Um, I'm going to wear away the corners uh, with this particular brush. And what I love about this is how unpredictable um, this can be. I'm going to click just all over the poster and really start to um, mess it up and wear it out and really tear the edges around here and just run it um, very very lightly up and down the sides clicking occasionally making it look like that the poster's really faded basically. Feel free to um, use the um, square bracket keys to increase and decrease the size of your brush to get a little bit, bit of variation here. Um, but you'll find that um, simply by changing those shape dynamics uh, it actually becomes fairly unpredictable and you can get a really grungy um, messed up look for your poster. The other thing I'm going to do here is add an outer glow to this particular layer. I'm going to change the outer glow to black and it's actually not going to have much of an effect until I do a couple of things. Bring it over here so you can see it. First of all I'm going to go to blending options and make sure that I've unchecked layer mask hides effects. Really important otherwise you won't see anything. I'm going to change the, the size of this I'm going to change the spread and make sure that it's set to normal, otherwise you're really not going to see much of an effect. I'm going to increase the spread of it a little bit and the size of that, um, of this outer glow. And what you'll notice is that I've now got a darker edge um, around those tears, which looks, um, helps to weather an agent and it looks really awesome. Now at any time I can um, erase any of these brush strokes from the, um, from the layer mask and I can add some more. So I can go around this poster and tear it up a little bit like this. Now feel free to experiment with some of the other brushes in Photoshop as well because by changing the shape dynamics you'll get some um, rather interesting effects and you know I guess the, the downside of using a single single brush like uh, Veining Feather 2 is that it can look a bit um, similar. So make sure you increase and decrease the size of that brush using the square bracket keys and maybe even change brushes around a little bit. Now what I'm going to do is 